Well, it's time for tonight's reality check. As has been noted, people will fall more easily for a big lie than a small one. Victor Davis Hansen is a historian. He's a fellow at the Hoover Institution, also professor emeritus of classics at Cal State Fullerton. He says the entire Russia story we've been talking about for months is just such a big lie created by the Democratic Party with the help of a credulous media. Victor Davis Hansen joins us tonight. Um, professor, you're saying that this, this whole thing is just nonsense. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I think you... I think you have to go to the origins and the causes, the methodology and the objectives. I mean, this whole thing started during the nomination process when a never Trump people commissioned a uh, dossier by a retired British agent, the so-called fusion Christopher Steele dossier that was pretty much ridiculous. And then it was passed on uh, after Trump got the nomination to the Clinton campaign. And yes. then it was forgotten about. And then suddenly when she did what nobody thought she would do and lost, and Robbie Mook's analytics and data didn't prove to be successful, and she didn't go to the blue wall states sufficiently, then all of a sudden a new narrative came. Well, the Russians must have done it by the WikiLeak trove uh, process. And then this dossier somehow got in the hands of the FBI director, whether he paid for it or not. I think Senator Grassley is investigating that. And now we have this idea that Trump colluded, and this dossier was leaked to media sources, and it was pretty obscene, pretty outrageous, uh, had things in it that could not have been true. And where are we now? We've had the Director of National Intelligence, James Clapper, said that it didn't exist. We've had Senators Feinstein and Grassley say there was, uh, FDI Director Comey said there was not an ongoing investigation. And then it, it was very unlikely because Donald Trump, uh, he didn't dismantle Eastern uh, European missile defense. He didn't go to Geneva and pr press a plastic red button. He didn't make fun of Romney for saying Russia was an existential enemy. He didn't have a hot mic exchange with the Russian president saying that he would be more flexible with the Russians after the election. So that entire reset appeasement of Russia <laughs> came from the Clinton-Obama team, not Donald Trump. And now we're here, and it was very unlikely anyway, because he ran as a Jacksonian who was going to beef up uh, U.S. defenses and get tough with our enemies or adversaries or rivals uh, abroad. So it wouldn't be necessarily logical that Putin would want him to be president. And yet here we are, and I think the real message that we're missing is that there was evidence that uh, some people in the Obama administration had surveilled people, either Trump himself or around Trump, and that that information had either been reverse targeted deliberately to find information or incidental. It didn't matter because the names were on mask and then they were leaked to pet reporters. And so for the last six months between this dossier and this surveilling, we've had these illegal leaks. So if Special Investigator Mueller go, looks at the totality of the so-called Russian collusion dash surveillance story, I think we'll come to conclusions that we don't expect. What would the, I mean, how ironic would it be, though, if in the course of the investigation, and these investigations go in directions that you can't predict, no one can, um, that people got in trouble, because that happens with these things, and at the same time we discovered that at its core the story was just a lie, it was, it was a nothing burger, there was nothing there, there was no collusion between Putin and Trump, but it still ended up really hurting or bringing down this administration, is that possible? Yeah, yeah, I think it is. I mean, we've had a whole cadre of Washington and New York reporters have done nothing other than for six months using all of their tools at their disposal, their genius, their experience to prove that Donald Trump colluded with the Russians. They can't find anything. They haven't spent commiserate time to look at who was unmasking uh, individuals, and we, that, that may come out from the House Intelligence Committee. But uh, what we're seeing here, I, I don't want to be too dramatic, is sort of historically a slow motion coup where you have a nexus of celebrities, academics, uh, the Democratic and progressive uh, parties, and then you have the media, and they feel that they can delegitimize a president with a thousand nicks none of them insignificant in themselves, but they coalesce to build a narrative that Trump is inexperienced, that he's right. uncouth, that he's crude, that he's reckless. And each day, the point is to drive his uh, popularity down one half a point, one exactly. point, until it, he, can't, uh, he can't function in Congress because purple state con congressional representatives don't want to take the risk to, to yeah, further his govern. initiatives. And meanwhile... <laughs> The ACA, the tax reform, uh, his appointments, everybody agrees they've been excellent. So there's Trump, the message, and the agenda versus Trump, the demonized president. 
you got to wonder if the people who run our news organizations ever think to themselves, it's kind of weird that my priorities align precisely with those of the Democratic Party. <laughs> Maybe that's corrupt. <laughs> I yeah, I think, think, I think the Democratic Party is taking its cue from the media. When the media has a narrative, yeah. whether it's u the use of profanity, the Democratic Party follows. Oh, of course. And they've, they've been following the Trump story because the media has been generating it. That's for sure. Professor, I love talking to people with great memories, and you have one and perspective. Thanks for joining us. Oh, thank you. I don't know about that. Thank you for having me, Tucker. Thank you.